I'm very uh, excited and uh, happy to be here with you today to share with you a story about space and how it, um, it affected me personally. Uh, it changed my life. Thus, I'm here. And uh, really, it's changing our life every day. And it has changed our life from way before. Uh, so I'm going to go, uh, I do have some slides that I'm going to share with you. And um, uh, the first slide that I would like to start my presentation with is this picture of um, the Earth taken from the lunar horizon. This is a very symbolic picture to me because this one, this picture was one of the earliest pictures taken by astronauts who flew to the moon. So it's one of the earliest pictures of our planet from the moon. And uh, interestingly enough, yesterday marked the 40th anniversary of the end of the last mission of the Apollo program. So December 11 was the end of an era. The Apollo program ended. But did we stop? Moving forward, we did not stop. Did, um, as a nation, did we say uh, it's the end and we, we, we were done? No, on the contrary, we embraced change and we moved forward with a different program. This picture also has a, a big relevance to me personally because when I saw this picture and the landing on the moon, I walked outside and I looked up to the stars and to the sky. Uh, you see, I was nine years old, um, and I was growing in a different part of the world. Uh, you could tell I have an interesting French accent. <laughs> and somebody said, oh, why don't you give your presentation in French? So I said, with the French accent. But I grew up, uh, when I saw this picture, I went outside uh, from my house in Lebanon, and I looked at the stars, and I said, wow, it's amazing how can a nation and how can people travel that far, land a man on the moon, and return him back to Earth? So I was fascinated. I was inspired as a child. I had a dream, but I never dreamed that my dream will become a reality one day. So it did change my life for the better. And I am here standing in front of you, sharing with you my story and uh, the story of uh, the next program that came after the Apollo program that is changing our life. The story that I want to share with you about the major change that's happening uh, every day is the story of the International Space Station. The International Space Station, some of us hear about it, some of us read about it, um, but it's alive and well. The shuttle program ended. And I don't live far from here. I live on, in Melbourne on the East Co Coast. And when the shuttle program ended, I did work on the shuttle program. I even felt, um, felt bad uh, because it was dear to me and it was an amazing machine that we human were able to create and make. It's so complicated, so complex, and every time it launched, I looked in awe and I said, wow, it's amazing. But the shuttle program ended but the space station is alive. So we did not stop, and this we embraced change as an agency and as people, we embrace that change, and we are putting it to good use with the utilization of the space station. So the space station is really a, a technological marvel, I call it. It is, uh, it is 200 miles above us, and um, uh, what's interesting to me also recently, a gentleman, went up to 120 miles and dived from the sky, and he went supersonic and Mach wave, and I said to myself, oh gee, he should have just went another 80 miles to the space station and jumped from the space station. He's almost up. So I was really fascinated by, by the courage he had for doing what he did. Uh, it's really amazing. But the space station, uh, we, we, I even underestimate what it, what it is. It's, it's huge. It's the size of a football field. When they assembled it, it's like, it's, it's about five bedroom. It's almost the size, you're almost like you're in a five bedroom. Uh, when they assemble it, it's like telling people here, okay, we're well, gonna build a house with five bedrooms 
And you know what? We're going to build the first bedroom. You're going to go live in it. And at the same time, when you're living in this first bedroom, you're going to continue building the four other bedrooms. So as you live in this one bedroom, keep working and build the five bedroom. So the assembly and the work and the effort that went into putting it up in space is amazing. And one cannot really uh, describe it. it. We are working with international partners on it. There are five uh, different space agencies. Uh, the Russians, the Europeans, the Japanese, us, and then some even top officials are even saying maybe we should invite the Chinese. So it is really um, uh, an amazing structure. Uh, it, it orbits about 16 times, and the speed that goes uh, at is really amazing, also about 18,000 miles per hour. This is a view from the space station, and I call it, this is like a... Uh, a window with a view to our blue planet. Uh, this is a, a, a piece of window called Cupola, was built by the European, uh, but the space station really was a catalyst to international cooperation. So the space uh, shuttle ended, we embraced the change, we built the space station, we started working with the international, and instead of competing as nations, we, are pu uh, we put ISS together and we are using it for the endeavor and the betterment of the whole planet, of the whole world. It's not only to benefit me or uh, Florida. It's to benefit the whole planet. So it was really a great example in the, ch in the way we cooperate with the whole world. It, it really we, it created a change in the way we do business and the way we collaborate with people of this earth. This is uh, a picture of... Uh, the future crew module that we are working at right now, it's uh, called MPCV or Orion. It's basically going to put the astronauts and take them to, a, uh, to the moon or to an asteroid. But this is a picture also where uh, we are trying to collaborate with the European to work on it. So really, uh, it is an amazing uh, change that we embraced and we are using it. Uh, the second change that I would like to share with you is that the, the, the space station created a paradigm shift in the space exploration. So we are right now, instead of um, uh, working alone, we're working with other nations. And also, it's, it's been an impetus for, uh, for uh, the development of the new frontier. What I mean by this, this is a picture of uh, the Dragon capsule uh, being burst to the space station. Okay, what's the story behind this picture? This is a gentleman that uh, him and people like him created a company called SpaceX. So that's one of his capsule being docked to the space station, taking uh, cargo to the astronauts living on board the space station. So he had two successful missions. Him and people like him uh, accepted the change. We also embraced that change of the end of the shuttle because the space shuttle used to take all the stuff to the astronauts. We embraced that change and this change is being an impetus for new space industries. Uh, SpaceX, uh, Orbital Science, uh, Virgin Galactic, um, and you name it, few other more uh, that are really now uh, being created. They're putting their time, their fortune, and their money with the help of NASA to basically commercialize space and take people to space and to the space station. And I truly believe that one day, maybe one of us here, or maybe our kids, will go up to the space station as tourists, or will go to low Earth orbit as tourists. So really, the change that's happening here is almost like the change that happens a while back with aviation. We now just take it for granted. We go to an airport, check into with the TSA. OK, it's, it's really challenging. Uh, <laughs> and exciting, but we go and hop on the plane and fly. We just take it for granted. It's, it's a simple fact. And I expect and see that this is what's going to be the case with space exploration. But also the major change that's really impacting us with the space station is the exciting work and the breakthrough that are happening as I speak on the space station. We are doing research in biology, uh, biotechnology, human physiology, physical science, microgravity, uh, fluids, combustion. Uh, we are developing technology. We are looking at the Earth, studying Earth sciences, physics, astrophysics, you name it, even education. We are, in, we are 
really employing it, using it for education of our generation and, and, and the future generation. Uh, as this picture, I just want to indicate that most of the planet, if you look at this, uh, the, uh, the map, uh, most of the world is participating in the space station research and work that's ongoing as I speak. Some of the breakthroughs that we are seeing on the space station and they're impacting our lives these days uh, are in the area of, uh, not only we, we know much about bones and muscle and visual impairment and uh, heart atrophy, we, we, we've, we've learned a lot about this stuff, but now it's more infectious disease and microbes. So a lot of the microbes that are being harnessed on the space station especially like in salmonella. They're being brought back to Earth, looked at, studied, evaluated by the researcher who are developing an, a new vaccine on Earth. So that's, that's really a true example of, of how this is affecting us, affecting us here down here. Another example is this is uh, a case where an earthquake, 7.6, hit a, town, uh, a city in Pakistan. 7.6 million people lost their life. Uh, more people were refugees without any water to drink, no clean water. So a commercial company came to the rescue for this cause to help them, but the commercial company have used the filtration system and specifically the resin that was developed on the water system on the space station to help the people who needed clean water in Pakistan. Uh, the, other, uh, the other area is we are really looking closely at the Earth. Yes, we have satellites. Of course, we have satellites, they're orbiting the Earth. We have instruments, sensors, you name them. They could do anything you could imagine on. But the astronauts on the space station, they're really looking, looking down at Earth, looking down at us, and taking picture of disasters, global changes, as they occur. And they're sharing these pictures and this information with the right people down on Earth so they could take the preventive, preventive uh, measures, uh, such as these uh, couple pictures of the volcano eruption and the iceberg uh, movement. And other stories that I would like to share with you quickly is uh, spider knot. This is very recently, a spider knot just got back from space after spending 100 days. So he was up, she, she was up, Nefert they called her uh, Nefertiti, because the student, it was an effort to entice students to uh, start uh, to get them involved in space and education and excite them about the work. So there was a contest, a student from Egypt won the contest. He was one, one of two. His idea was, okay, if I fly a spider to the space station and put it in a microgravity environment, what is it gonna do? Is it gonna still jump and catch its prey or is it gonna sit there and be lost because it's not gonna know what's up from down, what's left from right and I'm just don't know what to do. So the experiment was conduct conducted in space and Nefertiti was successful in catching its prey and it's now back into the <laughs> Smithsonian uh, in, in DC. And the other picture is uh, we do have a Robonaut. Mr. Robonaut is the latest visitor to the space station. This is not him, that's his brother here. I took this picture, but the real one is, uh, is up on space station helping the astronauts and he is doing work on the space station and he is expected to go outside and do work uh, on the outside. So uh, what, what, what is my message? What is the story I'm trying to tell you, to share with you here is that really I personally was inspired and fascinated by the space program as a kid. I met a colleague last year, we were doing a, a leadership assignment he works at a different center. He was talking and he presented the same story. He said, I grew up here, my dad was in the Air Force, and I was fascinated and inspired by the landing on the moon. And I wanted to work for NASA and I'm here working at NASA. So here's a, a gentleman growing up here, inspired by the same stories that inspired me thousands of miles ago. Things change, the space shuttle ch uh, retired. It changed, it affected us, it affected our life. A lot of people lost their job, but we didn't stop. We embraced that change. That change had ripple effect and it's really being embraced and generating new economy and new discoveries. To be honest with you, I still go outside and look at the star and dream and I'm always fascinated and inspired. And I would ask you to join me in going out tonight and looking at the stars. Thank you. <laughs>